Aristotle, Rene Descartes, Oscar Wilde, all these great thinkers have called humans rational animals. But if we actually look at the scientific findings, psychologists and behavioral economists have found hundreds of ways in which people's behavior is foolish, in which it's irrational, in which people are completely biased. Why, for example, do testosterone-crazed teenage boys risk their necks doing these crazy stunts on their skateboards? Why is it that people like MC Hammer, who go from rags to riches, often then turn around and go back from riches to rags? So in the United States, there are over $500 billion that people spend on these lavish consumer goods. So for example, Elvis Presley spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to have his Cadillac covered with a paint that was made from ground up diamonds and pearls. One idea is that they're just being shallow, they're materialistic. But actually, if you look below the surface, there's something much more interesting going on at, at a deeper level. Why is it that in some countries, a man who wants to get married has to shell out the equivalent of two years income in bride price? But in other countries, the bride's family needs to ante up cash in the form of a gigantic dowry. Is it good to delay gratification? or is it bad to delay gratification? There's a classic study done in which they brought kids into a laboratory and they put a piece of candy in front of them. And what had been presumed for all these years is that of course delay of gratification is a good thing. Everyone should learn how to delay their gratification. But it turns out that if you look a little deeper, delaying gratification isn't always a good thing and delaying gratification isn't always good for every person. The classical economists pushed a view of human beings as eminently rational and supremely self-serving in our decision-making. But then along came a pack of troublemaking psychologists and experimental economists who argued that human decisions are instead shockingly stupid and painfully self-defeating. But in this book, we present the evidence for a third view. So what the book suggests is that people's decisions are actually driven by these deep-seated evolutionary goals. And people don't just have one of these evolutionary goals, they have a set of evolutionary goals. Even though we think that we have one personality, it's like we actually have multiple personalities, where each of these personalities is in charge of a different evolutionary goal. Even though decisions might look irrational, they might look foolish at the surface level, at a deeper evolutionary level, they're even more rational than anyone could have imagined.